Hi guys, Penny here from Monaco Nail Academy for another one of our Friday fudge ups. This is the weekly video series where we're going through some of the most common mistakes and how to fix or avoid them. So this week we have another acrylic one. This was requested by quite a few people and that's what to do when you have flooded the acrylic. So first of all I want to talk about why or how acrylic floods because it's not quite as obvious as just you put too much. Absolutely it could be that you just had too much product. Um, you're in a rush and you put the product down and maybe you put it too close and then suddenly it's sitting on the skin and we're flooded. That's definitely one option for how acrylic can be flooded but it's not as simple as that. It can be that the bead itself, although fully formed, is too wet and your wet bead could end up sort of just sitting too close and sort of even though you think it looks nice and smooth, it seeps in under the epinachium and around the folds and that would also be considered flooded even though it is nice and smooth, it's, it's even, but it is way too close to the skin and in fact just slightly underneath and so that would definitely be considered flooded. The other thing though that might surprise some of you is that even if we had basically just a wet uh, brush but with a very few um, grains of powder, so like I don't even like that tiny amount but we're working with it over here and we go to stroke here that can be considered flooded and the reason for that is that the powder itself is actually only here to initiate the reaction that creates a solid nail. It is the liquid, the monomer that turns solid and becomes the nail. So wherever the liquid goes that's what is considered a nail and where a polymerization reaction happens. So just because you don't have a thick area of product where powder has combined with the liquid doesn't mean you haven't flooded and you can still end up with I guess the symptoms for lack of a better word the symptoms of flooding even though you know that you didn't put product there or at least you didn't put any bead there but all you need is liquid to have flooded and if there are even just a couple of grains of powder that can cause the chemical reaction you have a flooded nail. So why is having flooding so bad? Because the thing is like you've, if you've seen our I think it was episode one of Friday Fudge Ups we filed back a thick cuticle application and it looked fine afterwards. It looked, uh, you know, natural and pretty. Um, so why can't we do that with our flooded nails and still have good results? Well, first of all, we want to try not to flood at all because uh, we don't want that product sitting on a client's skin or under their epinachium or anything like that. We don't want product that close to a client's skin. Second of all, um, if we do get product flooding and, and coming into contact with the client's skin, one of the results can be an allergic reaction, whereas they shouldn't, in most cases, they shouldn't really experience an allergic reaction when it only touches the nail plate. If it's only when product touches the skin that you generally see reactions happen. The other thing with trying to avoid flooding is that if you have product touching skin or areas where there are, um, there's a lot more oil, bacteria, debris, that sort of thing, but mostly the oil deposit, it will create lifting. If we have this area flooded but it's sitting right on skin, then that very edge of the nail will start lifting very quickly as the oil from the skin pushes it up off the surface. So you're going to get lifting. Lifting can lead to lots of things. It can lead to damage if the nail comes off. It can also lead to bacterial infections if moisture gets stuck under the lifting. So if at all possible, we want to avoid flooding at, at all counts. And the main way to do that is just to practice your ratios. So um, it, it, there's no shame in practicing those no matter how long you have been doing nails for. Um, but in terms of your ratio, you want to, it will be different from brand to brand. So you want to look for a bead 
that goes glossy within sort of um, a couple of seconds of being formed but that doesn't lose its shape so this one's a little bit wet see how it's losing its shape but also doesn't have grains so grains would indicate a bead that was too dry if there was these grains around the top there so you want um, a, a bead that is fully formed that is um, not too wet but also doesn't stay grainy for more than around three to five seconds depending on how hot it is really like weather does affect that um, but so you want a bead that sits nice and high on the brush doesn't flatten out that would indicate it was too wet um, and also if you're practicing on like palette paper or form paper uh, if it has a blue ring around it that means that the ratio is really really wet and you really need to pull it back when I was brand new I used to work way too wet because it looked smoother uh, and I thought that that made prettier nails when really actually it was flooding and I had lifting on every single client um, and I didn't know why well, I can tell you now that it was because on every client I worked so wet to try and get a smooth finish, but I just created a lot of backfill work for me when they came back. So try and avoid it altogether by working with correct ratios. If you're working with the correct ratio, then it's really got nothing to do with how close to the, the edge you get. Yes, you don't want to sit the product on the, on the skin but you can get right up nice and close to the skin without making contact if your ratio is correct so lastly what do we do now that we have actually flooded how do we fix this well i did already show you on episode one how to fix um, a high ridge and file it back so there wouldn't be much point in this video if that was the answer because i've already shown you that in fact, with these flooding examples, this one where it has gone way over the edge, uh, this one where it's sitting right on the skin, and this side where it was all liquid all the time, uh, to be honest, you can't fix it without removing that product. You can't get in around the skin or under the edge of the eponychium with a file and hope for the best. If I had flooded, then I would be wrapping this nail up to soak off the product and starting from scratch. You've got 10 other nails you can do while that happens. Mistakes do happen, it's okay. Um, so I would just wrap it up, put a foil on it, do the other nails, do everything I could with the other nails, and then come back to that one and re-sculpt it towards the end. Uh, there's just no other guarantee, like even with this one where it's sitting over the skin, first of all, if I was to file that back, I'm filing right onto the skin, um, I have much, much higher risk of damaging that skin with my filing, let alone with the product. I would rather get the product off and do a better, safer enhancement that will stick properly. So I'm sorry there's not really a quick answer, but my best recommendation would be to take it off. Do it again, learn from it, and one day you'll realize that you haven't flooded in months and you didn't even realize. Okay, so that is the end of this week's episode of Friday Fudge Ups. Uh, comment below with yes, please, if you want me to let you know when each new episode goes live. And otherwise, I will see you next Friday with a new common mistake and how to fix it.